On today's episode, we're going to find out the answer to the age-old question, can you earn six figures working auto claims? As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you going to do when something goes wrong? Kaplik it. CPLIC, or Kaplik for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters, formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need as an independent adjuster, head over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. Hey IAs, it's Chris Stanley of IAPath. You know how most new adjusters cannot break into the industry? They struggle because companies have two to five years worth of experience as a requirement. And how can they get that experience? But don't worry, at IPATH, we get that experience waived with our 90-day online mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to IPATH.com. Today, I'm going to interview James Mathis. James fell off a roof while handling property claims and broke his knee in his first year as an independent adjuster. Now, he thought his IA career was over until he stumbled across the idea of auto claims on one of my videos. Today we're gonna to look back at James's first year in auto claims and we're gonna let him tell you whether you can earn six figures in auto claims. All right, IAs, welcome back to the Independent Adjuster Podcast, or if you're watching on YouTube, the Auto IA Show. Uh, today I'm doing an interview with a former student who has, uh, got started with some of our methodologies, but taking it way further than I could ever imagine. His name is James Mathis. James, thank you so much for being here today. It's good to be here, Chris. It's good to see you. Uh, James, why are we bringing you on this show, though? Like, what's the momentous occasion in the timeline of your career of why we're bringing you on now? I think it's because you finally recognize that my good looks and personality is what got me to where I'm at today. And, and okay. you realize that that methodology in itself is enough to... Uh, get you through in life yeah we're writing a new book called the <laughs> beauty adjusters playbook by James so Mathis. <laughs> I, I had a great year i had a great year exceeded lots of uh goals and uh and, and it was all tied to what i learned from my path a lot of it most of it so well so has it been officially one year now have we hit that mark yet yeah so let's there's two ways of gauging it. One is my official graduation date from IAPATH was, um, I believe it was late August is when it was, or I'm sorry, mid-September. Um, it was two weeks after that, um, which I believe it was September the, um, I'm sorry, October the 1st is whenever I landed in Odessa, Texas. And that's kind of when I really got started. Uh, prior to that, I've done one or two claims, um, but that was it. So let's trace it back then. So why did you decide to get into auto adjusting? Like, uh, let's let people know kind of that backstory. It's like, we really want to take them through the journey of your year, James. So they can see their journey might look completely different, but they can take some key learning points, I think, from some of the things you had to do and had to sacrifice and pivots you had to make to survive. I think there's a lot we can learn. So... Basically, what had happened was is that, uh, like a lot of people, sick of corporate America, sick of where I was at, wanted some more independence, and and I had been exposed to um, the adjusting world through some friends of mine, through some other careers that I'd been in, and had made the decision that I was going to jump into being an adjuster and, and being an IA. Uh, did not, and even though I had a background in automotive, my first choice was not to jump into auto right away. Uh, like a lot of people, I, I was heading straight towards property because we all hear that's where the money's at. And and so to to get started, I was studying, I was getting my license. I started working, doing one of these, um, you know, where you do, go out, you do virtual assignments where you're taking photos, you're scoping and all that. And and I was doing that. And you know, I was actually doing quite well. I'd even told my wife a few times, hey, I'm doing so well at this. I'm not even sure if I even want to become a full-fledged adjuster because I'm doing so well at it. Well, during that time, uh, of course, 
like a lot of people, I'm watching Matt Allen on Adjuster TV. I'm soaking all that in. Um, Matt comes to Dallas. I meet Matt. Um, at the same time, Matt has talked up, you know, had had, had said something about uh, um, iPath. And then you also had some videos that were on Adjuster TV that he had, uh, that he had played. And, and I saw those. And so it kind of got me a little interested. But what the catalyst was is that in June of last year, um, I was inspecting a roof in Sherman, Texas, and I had an accident on the roof, um, injured my knee, and uh, subsequently had to have knee surgery. And when that accident happened, I was thinking, geez, what am I going to do now? You know, I've got too much time invested. This is a goal oh of mine. Goodness. I'm not going to quit. I've got to figure out how to make this work. And at the same time, you know, hey, I quit my job. I mean, the income stream is, you know, everything right now. <laughs> um, and I was okay for a while, but, you know, you don't want to deplete everything. So I, so I, that's whenever I contacted uh, Chris at IAPATH. Well, first I called Matt and Matt says, well, have you thought about auto? And so, boom, you know, that's, that's how we got started. Then, you know, you what did I tell you on the phone? Do you remember? Because I remember very clearly what I told you on the phone. Um, you know, I mean, you got me on the spot and I've only had one cup of coffee. So, yeah. <laughs> so I told you, James, don't sign up. You live in Dallas. Oh, that's right. That's I'm right. not sure if you're going to be able to compete in that market. And I they, think that's what got you so fired up. Uh, yep. That just was like winding up a car. You know, wing, yeah, wing, yeah, wing. you said... You said, you know, you live in the mecca of, of IAs. There's more, there's way more adjusters and you know, more IAs there than anywhere else. And you're going to have a difficult time finding work. And I'm like going challenge accepted, you know. Uh, I told him when, not to buy my mentorship because I didn't know if I could help him <laughs> compete in Dallas. And he buys it anyways and takes off. So quickest way, to get me to do something to is, quickest way to get me to do something is tell me not to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, so you break or bust your knee in some capacity, you hurt yep. your knee, you got to go in for surgery. I remember the surgery because I think it was the first night of class, somebody was a little um, up on pain pills, if I well, recall. Actually, what was, happened was, is that we had the first class. That Thursday, I had the surgery. It was the second class I was hopped up on pain pills, so, <laughs> that, uh, on pain medication. So uh, that's how I that's how that went down. It was actually after. And that's how we got to know James Mathis. Then we turned to find out it wasn't the pain pills. That's just James Mathis. That's we right. thought it was the pain pills. So, um, so, okay. So you come through, you go through our five-week class. Uh, you pop out. Um, you know, did, at the end of the class, did you feel like, yeah, I can do this? Or, or did you feel like, how are you feeling? At the I, felt, I felt between what I had learned in the class and my knowledge of automobiles and, and the repair process that, that – I, I had the mechanics of the job down that I could write a, I could write a good estimate. I could, you know, I could do what I needed to do. That was my thoughts when I left the class. Okay. Um, however, when it came time to write my first estimate, I panicked and I think I blew your phone up like 17 times in like 20 minutes and, and uh, we finally got through it. But uh, it, it's, it's the, the hardest claim you'll ever write is your first one, you know, and then totally it gets, true. And then it gets easier after that because you just, things just lock, you overthink it, you know, yep. and that, and that's what I was doing. I was overthinking. It. You can be way too smart for this business. I can tell you that. So you're in Dallas, you get, you get your first claim or two in Dallas proper, you know, in that area, your service and daily claims. Actually, and my claims, they sent me a hundred miles East. Oh my <laughs> that, those are my first two claims. My first one was a total loss rollover F-150. That was my very first claim. And, uh, and so, but I had to drive a hundred miles to get to my first two claims. So <laughs> I go breaking in the industry to get your first claim. I'll drive a hundred miles. Sure. 60 yeah. bucks or whatever. I'll get doing. that. So, so <laughs> what made you make a, a leap? Cause you said you, you leapt to Odessa. Uh, and for those who don't understand, Odessa is not near Dallas. Yeah. It's that's a six hour, six and a half hour drive. Um, basically as Chris said, this is a tough market. I was, you know, I, I just wasn't getting work. I wasn't getting offered that much work. And if you know me, I can't sit around for very long. I've, I've got to keep moving. And, and so I'm calling IA firms going, where do you need help? Where do you need help? Where do you need help? And I had three IA firms and within a couple hours said, Hey, if you can go to West Texas, if you can go to Midland, Odessa, we can, we can get your work. You can stay busy. So that was a no brainer. 
you know, so um, that conversation happened, I believe on a Tuesday and by Thursday, I was, um, I was parked in Odessa, Texas in my RV on the phone calling IA firm say, hey, I'm here, send me work. And I believe that within, I believe within the first couple of hours that I said I was there, I received 13 claims and uh, was in complete panic mode at that point because now I've got to figure out how I'm going to go see these things. And they were, they were not all in Midland Odessa proper. They were spread out all over West Texas and now I've got to figure this thing out. And so that's, that's how that got started. And I spent, I spent two and a half months out there, um, mm -hmm. learned a lot, learned. I mean, I, I mean, you talk about a crash course in RVs, a crash course in heavy equipment, um, super duty trucks, things like that. Um, semi trailers, tanker trailers, I mean, within my first two and a half months, I was just inundated with all these different types of planes. And, and it was, it was some long days on a little bitty trailer. You know, there were days I'd wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't be finished till nine or 10 o'clock at night and sometimes later, but you know, I was determined to make this thing work and I didn't want to fail and I wasn't going to give back claims. And I wasn't going to say no to claims. There was times where my queue was so full. I had to call the, I had to call the IA firms and say, Hey, put me on hold until I get caught up. You know, and of course, the day I go back on, it's like all those claims they held, they just like dumped them back on me. So it was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> so did you just work Midland Odessa for two and a half months and then went back to Dallas? So basically, that's what happened. Um, uh, there was some family things going on and I need to get back home. And uh, and so I worked there two and a half months, came back home and the I firms that I worked with because I had gone out to West Texas and I did everything I said I was going to do they supported me when I came back home and they gave me work, you know, because they knew that I was qualified to do it and I was going to get the job done and I wasn't going to leave them hanging. So that, that created opportunities here for me. Um, but of course now we're into late November, uh, actually into December and that's everything's slowing down anyway. I mean, everybody was slowing down. And so there, there just wasn't, still wasn't a lot going on, but I was staying busy and I had done well enough during my time out in West Texas that, that income carried me over a little while. So, um, well, you know, one of the observations when interviewing people across the years and talking to them about how they've been successful is the principle that we talk a little bit about in our books and things is a working adjuster tends to keep working. It's getting the first wave of work to get that started to get people to trust you, which is what I think you did by going to Odessa. Uh, you know, it was like the catalyst for all your relationships that you then built with the IA firms. It was uh, pretty shocking to watch James kind of catapult out and be like, guys, this is how many claims I got. We're like, well, where are you going, man? <laughs> like, you're, I see you're sending me pictures of your camper and you're in West Texas. What's going on? I don't understand. Yeah, it was, right. it was pretty phenomenal. But I think that risk, would you say it was worth it to have take, made that risk? In a heartbeat. I, if I was given a choice to do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. I, there's, there's nothing I would have changed. Um, you know, maybe I would have asked more questions if there was other places other than Midland Odessa, because if you've ever been there, you'll know why. But uh, someplace a little prettier, maybe that had green grass and water. But uh, you know, I would, I'd do it again. Especially if I live in a place, you know, if I lived in a major metropolitan area like Dallas-Fort Worth, it's just inundated with IEs, and. and had the ability to travel and to go someplace and stay for a while, you the, I would do it. I would do it again in a second. You know, I wouldn't sit around and wait for a catastrophe. I wouldn't sit around and wait for, for things like that. I would, I would do the exact same thing all over again. So, so you get back from Midland, you work some in Dallas and then kind of, where did you go from there? So by mid January, um, well, I was, I was blessed and lucky enough that I received a phone call from Matt Allen and I went and went to NACA. Uh, convention in Vegas with him and I got to walk around and be goofy and with a microphone and interview people. But um, I really didn't work much in January. Um, there wasn't, uh, everything was really slow. I'd taken, I'd taken myself off. He was off fishing. The, he was fishing. I was fishing too. I was. Are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Let me tell you about our sponsor, CCMS and Associates. CCMS has been called a big mom and pop firm because they care about their adjusters. They also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team. 
If you would like to be a part of their family, email your resume and cover letter and introduce yourself directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. There wasn't a lot of work. Went to Vegas, took myself off the schedule to go to Vegas, came back. Um, of course, they're like, okay, well, they start trickling in the work again because I just got back. Well, then I took off and went to Salt Lake City for another convention. And so I was off the schedule for a while. And I come back and now they're going, okay, well, James is putting himself on the schedule, put himself off the schedule. The guy that was really dependable before is not so dependable now. And so now my share of the work is starting to shrink. Uh, whereas I before I've proven myself and got a lot of work. So there's a lesson there is that, you know, if you're going to commit to working, you need to commit to working because they're going to depend on you. And the second you're not dependable, they're going to go to the next guy that is. And so I learned that hard lesson really quick. So my income stream was starting to dry up a little bit. And then um, lo and behold, you know, I get a phone call um, from a, a, a catastrophe firm and they were starting a daily claims business. And they wanted me to come in and help put that together and manage it and manage the process because I knew claim leader uh, I knew the processes, some of the carriers they had, and so they wanted me to help out with that. Uh, two weeks into that, so now we're looking at March. We're into March here. Uh, two weeks into that, um, I get laid off. Uh, COVID thing happens. Everything shuts down. Um, they're like, man, we got to shut it down for a little while. And so I'm like, no problem. Well, this is also whenever hell season is starting to kick in, okay? And then immediately I'm getting phone calls from – PDR firms, other IA firms, and now the work is just exploding and I'm busy. I mean, I'm extremely, extremely busy. Um, not a lot of fishing time going on at then. And things are going great. I mean, just the the, the work's flowing. My, I mean, I've, I've got so much steady work coming in. I'm not having to drive real far for it. And, um, you know, now, are you working like, in Dallas? Or you traveling around? The I was country? working. I was working at that point. I was still working in Dallas. Uh, Dallas. Well, most of my work was was Dallas and North and a little East, which is perfect because I live northeast of Dallas and the you know, far northern corners of the Metroplex. Um, so those easier. I can get. I can go 100 miles west of Dallas faster than I can get into Dallas. So just it's it was perfect for me. So then I had the opportunity. Received a phone call and was given an opportunity to go to Shreveport to, to work a, uh, a drive for a, for a PDR firm. And, uh, and that was probably the best decision I ever made other than joining IPATH. I mean, it was just, they, they paid me a really good daily rate. Um, I learned a lot. I became, I mean, you know, I was down to the point where I could photoscope photo and scope a vehicle in six and a half to seven minutes. And it was accurate. I mean, that's, you, you get really, I just, I, the more dense you see, the more you look at dense, the more you find. And then you just get a good pattern and a good rhythm and you're, you get pretty accurate at it. And so I, I did that. And then this firm, because I stayed there, I was the, I was the first person on the storm and I was the last person to leave, you know? And so if you know, this business, the last guy to leave is the guy that did the best job. And so that, I, that was the biggest compliment I could receive. No, it sounds a little braggadocious there, but you know, hey, I did my job. But uh, I've never been known to be shy. So then, uh, right after that, you know, uh, immediately after that, they sent me to College Station, Texas. I went down to College Station, uh, finished up in College Station. I said, "Hey guys, I need a break." You know, um, let me. How long have you been working at that point? When you say you need man, at break. that point, I was so. I had, I'd started the end of April in Shreveport. I got back home the, the week of Memorial Day, the, the Friday before Memorial Day. And then um, the Tuesday after Memorial Day, I went to, um, I went to, so I mean, five, six weeks, uh, five straight weeks is what I was out there. And then, so I'd go to um, College Station, which College Station is not that far. I was able to, I was only working six days a week. So I would come home on the weekends, uh, come home Saturday afternoon, and I drive back down early Monday morning. Uh, I get finished in college station. I say, guys, I need a break, man. I need a, I need a breather. I want to do some fishing. I want to spend some time with my wife. Give me some time off. And they go, hey, not a problem. And so I'm about an hour and a half out of college station, Bryan, Texas, and the phone rings. Hey, James, want to go to Odessa? I'm like, no, nobody wants to go to Odessa. And they go, well, we got a new guy that we're going to tr be trying out. 
And we asked him if he knew anybody else in the, that worked for us. And he knows only one person and that's you. And I said, well, what's his name? And they said, Max Olson. I was like, oh, little Max Olson. Um, <laughs> if it had been you anybody else, it. yeah, if it had been anybody else, I probably would have said no. And so I agreed to go to Odessa. Went to Odessa for a couple of weeks. Uh, Matt, uh, Max stayed out there. Uh, I left. Um, he, I think he stayed out there another week or two after me. But when I returned home, I was home for maybe three or four days and then made a deal with another company to run up to Champaign, Illinois and uh, Urbana, Illinois. Went up there. I was up there for maybe 10 days and it, it just rock and rolled, man. It just had a, made a ton of money in a few days. I mean, I, I wasn't there longer than two weeks. And, and you're still back. only working auto at this point. At this point, I'm only working auto. Yeah. So let me back up a second. So back whenever I was, uh, the other thing I was doing was talking to some other firms. When I was working in Shreveport and I was working in College Station, I was also doing desk writing at the same time. So I was, so I was working during the day on the drive and at night I was pulling from a queue and I was writing claims. Well, then by the time I went out to Odessa the second time, actually I did a little bit of it in, uh, in, in College Station. I was also getting field claims. So I'm running dailies, I'm doing, I'm, I'm desk writing and I'm working a drive. So I'm triple dipping my income, you know? I'm working from basically sun up to sundown and beyond, but you know what, hey, I'm out there to work, I'm not out there to play. But when I go home, I can play. And so um, it's either that or just stare at the walls and watch TV, so you might as well do some work while you're there. So that's what I, I did during this period of time while I was traveling. Um, no, you were like, you know, eight to six or whatever at the drive and then right. you're going to do field claims for two or three hours and you're going to go desk right from nine to two in the morning. Right. All right. All right. And I wake up at like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and I would desk right until I'd leave and go to the drive, you know? And so yeah, that's a lot of hours, but you know, you make money by the, you know, make hay when the sun shines, that's the way the term goes. So that's what I did and in fact, up the bank account. And, um, how did I learn how to do that stuff? I learned it from my path, of course, you know, because of the principles that they gave us of how to write a good claim. Um, and I was able to take the scope sheets from other people and just follow their scope sheets and write those claims. And um, you get pretty fast at that, and especially on health claims, you can write a decent health claim within 15 minutes. You know, if you're, if you're Chris Stanley, you can write them in six and a half. But, uh, you know, but so I did that after we went, uh, went to Urbana, came back home for a little while. Um, took a risk, went up to uh, Minnesota. There was some work up there. I kind of told this one firm, I said, hey, if you get 20 claims in any one area, call me, I'll go do it because you've got 20, you're going to get 50. If you got 50, you're probably going to get 75, 100. So I'll go ahead and, and run them. So I ran up to Minnesota. Minnesota was a bust. I didn't get much work up there. Um, made a little money, not much. And then I'm going to head back. Well, this is whenever the, the, the derecho hit, went through the Midwest, went through Iowa. Illinois, everywhere, called some firms. They said, yeah, uh, if, you get to, if you get to Iowa, we've got work for you. Uh, I was in Iowa 10 days, made a gross amount of money there. Uh, my first day in, in Iowa, I did 20 school buses my first day and, uh, and was paid very well for those. And they all had the same damage, the same everything. You talk about just duplication, it was a really fast thing. So finished up from that, came back home. Uh, well, that was during, I, I was watching what was going on with all the, the activity, tropical activity. Uh, and then that's when Laura and Marco were coming into the Gulf. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna bug out of here. I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna try to do property again. And that was my goal. I knew that I was gonna get a call for property. Uh, I get a phone call to do desk writing, uh, desk adjusting for auto. I took it. And then the day went, had one day of work. Matter of fact, we didn't even work. Uh, we went to an office and sat there. Then they canceled the assignment. I'm like, great. You know, and uh, Jason Revere, another IAPATH graduate, he was on the same deal. As a matter of fact, he had come here to Dallas from Shreveport and was staying in my RV while he was going to get his training done. Well, he goes back home. I'm like, what am I going to do now? And then I get a phone call. And sure enough, I go to Southern Louisiana to do property. And so uh, that's where I ended up my year. I just came back a week ago, not even, I haven't been home a week yet. I got home, this is, what is today, Thursday? So I've been a week, I got home last uh, Saturday. 
if you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself and a growing list of industry experts will show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who's going to let you shadow them, which is why we let you write along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at ipath.com slash TV. If, if you back this up and, and what you didn't mm. mention about the Lord appointment is you hurt your knee again. So, yep. so. Yeah, if one year of uh, uh, property hurt me, property hurt me. I'm just saying. It's yeah. the property and you don't, don't, don't. That I'm done with property. Don't I'm done with property. So when I was, when I was down in Southern Louisiana, um, I'd worked for probably 10 days, no pain whatsoever in my knee. Everything's going fine. And then one day I'm on a roof and, and it just starts hurting. I'm, I'm kind of going down the roof and, and it just, the pain just hit and went and inspected another house, another roof. Next day I go out again, I'm just in a lot of pain. Um, and then that was it. They put me on life, light duty. That was fun because when they put me on light duty, you have a lot of, you know, you have a lot of new adjusters that hit these big storms and some of them can't handle it and they quit. And so they were taking those people's claims and giving me all their notes and photos. And I had to figure out what needed to happen next get them caught up and write the claims if I could, if not, then they had to get sent up for reinspection. But uh, that's how I spent my last, you know, basically two weeks down in, in, in Louisiana. So that's crazy. What, what a journey. Uh, and be before I let you go though, James, I gotta share something here. Let's see if I can, can you see the screen here? Now this uh, is the path that we show students when they come uh, to IAPATH and what we believe is a, is a strategic way to break into the industry and get to wherever you want to eventually go. But if you can kind of follow the path here at the beginning, you're just getting ready as an adjuster. We get you in auto training. We, we then in the, the second phase here, you're trying to get your first claim. That was, uh, uh, you know, James, that was your first claims in Dallas, right? Like, right. No, those are your claims in Dallas. You had a little relation with people to say, Hey, is there anywhere else I can get more? And they're like, well, he's not a complete bozo. So maybe we could trust him with more work. And, and you expanded from there and you, and you basically took on a cat deployment at that point, right? That was, Basically. Odessa was like cat. And then, you head there and then you're off to the races with unlimited potential and, and options down here at the bottom, which is where you've taken it to wherever you want to go at this point to NACA to, to all these different things you did that were beyond what myself or anyone could ever coach you to do. But you opened up the floodgates at that point. So I just want other people to see that. They're like, yeah, this is like the little skipping st <laughs> stepping stones to get on the porch. But from there you can do whatever you want to do like James did. And I think, uh, for everyone who, who hear James' story, just realize there is risk involved. Ultimately, you got to take some risks. Uh, so James, other than saying, hey, you got to take some risks, is there anything you want to leave people with? Um, There's a couple of things. Number one is, so I worked for, I, I counted up yesterday, I worked for nine different companies this past year. Okay, I didn't limit myself to one or two companies. Um, you know, I'm, you guys, it's, it's networking, it's making friends. It's putting your name out there. It's, I joke around about being a pest, you know, um, it, there's some of that involved. Um, I'm going to say that every opportunity that I received was a result of first taking the steps that Christos do go out and meet people in, in, you know, rosters and, and, and call, but I didn't stop there. I, I called these people constantly asking for work because the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You, you realize that they've got hundreds of thousands of people in their roster that are just faceless people to them and they don't know who they are why are they going to call them versus somebody else and so the the thing is if they know who you are the last person i mean i was in sales for years if you can't tell um sales the, the thing is is you, you don't want to be the first person to call somebody you want to be the last person to call somebody because the last person they talk to is a person they're going to remember and so if you never talk to these people, they're never going to remember who you are. They're not going to know who you are. So that's number one is don't forget. To, I mean, call your, uh, your, your firms. Don't, don't just sit there and go, well, I'm on a firm. I hope I'm going to get work. You know, you got to make phone calls. You got to reach out. Uh, number two is, is that network, man, make friends. Okay. Uh, some of the work I received was because another IA told another firm about me and says, Hey, I know this guy, he can probably do it. Another thing is, I mean, let me look. I mean, 
if I didn't know Max Olson, I wouldn't have ended up in Odessa the second time. I don't know if that was a blessing or a curse, but um, that, you know, and then there's been other times where I have brought other people work. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to pick on Jason Revere for a second. The day that I met Mount Allen in Dallas, Jason Revere was there as well. And so, and Jason and I stayed in contact with each other. I, of course, ended up getting Jason to come to the dark side and go through IPATH. And, and then subsequently, he and I have created a friendship where I've helped him get other work from, from a couple of different sources. And at the same time, he does the same thing for me, you know? And so you make those friendships, you make those teams, and you'll, you'll get work, you know? And there's Terry Albrecht. I've worked with him. Um, I've referred work to him. He's referred work to me. I've had situations where I had to go take photos someplace. I'm just not in a position to do it. I've picked up the phone, called another IA that I knew and said, hey, will you go take photos for me? And they'll take the photos. I'll pay them some money for doing it. And you work together like that, you'd be very efficient, number one. And number two is you're leveraging the other person's networking as well. And so that's that's the main reason why I was able to accomplish what I accomplished this year was because I, I was constantly in quote unquote sales mode constantly calling people, staying, trying to stay in front of people and trying to stay relevant the best I could. So don't just, re- I mean, I'm going to say it one more time. Don't just sign up for a roster and say, well, I'm signed up with them. I don't understand why I'm not getting work. You're not getting work because they don't know who you are. That's why. So. Love it. And so uh, at the, the pre-recorded teaser, James, we, uh, we teased him with, uh, is it pod the question truly that could be answered? Is it possible to make SIG, the holy grail of independent adjusting is, you know, making six figures. That's what everyone is after. And so is it possible working just auto for someone to even make it, if they're hustling the way James Mathis does, is that even attainable? So I will make that a little bit better for you. So from the time that I started in West Texas until I, until we're going to go to the end of August, okay, which that was before my full year, I had exceeded six figures. Okay. And, and I exceeded it by a pretty nice number. Okay. Um, at the same time to kind of go a little bit further this calendar year. So not only did I exceed six figures from the first of September of last year until, or the end of September, first of October last year till the first of September this year, but I've already exceeded six figures this year, this calendar year. And so, um, been a lot of work. I'm tired. I'm taking some time off. I'm so serious about taking time off. I turned out four assignments, you know, in the last 24 hours, but uh, it, it's, it, the journey was worth it. Now I've got myself set up to where next year, you know, now the stress is repeat next year what I did this year. Uh, but it's going to be a lot easier because of the groundwork that I did this past year and the relationships I've made, you know, and not trying to end this on a negative note, but hey, if there's a firm out there that you don't work well with, okay, that you're just not clicking with, don't waste your time with that, okay? That's negative energy. It's, it's frustration on your level that you can be more productive somewhere else and finding other work doing. And, and I did that at least three times this past year where I had firms where I just said, you know what, this isn't worth me working with. It's too complicated for me. It doesn't, my business model doesn't fit their business model and just parted ways, you know, nothing negative about that. It's just... You know, it, you have to be efficient or you're not going to get there. Yep, that is very true, very true. And so, you guys and gals who are listening and watching, understand that what James did is not what you should expect to do. It's what you should uh, uh, aspire to, maybe, if, if you're like James Mathis and you just, like, running uh, like a bat out of hell. Uh, and, you know, you like risk and you like travel, you like those things. Um, but also understand and take away that, hey, it is possible. There is opportunities out there. Like I know we hear all the negative things in our industry, but it is possible to make money in this industry. You might have to do different things than what you envisioned, but you got to be open to those doors that are opening the way James was. I think that's a huge part of this. It's just be aware what's going on, who's calling, where are the opportunities and be in that network that James is talking about with other IAs, with the IA firms and be constantly contacting people. But James, thanks for sharing your story because uh, it blew me away every month. You're giving me updates every week sometimes, updates, and I'm like, this is amazing, you know, uh, w- what you've done. And I know you worked hard for it. IPATH cannot take the credit for what you did. We helped open up a door, and then you just pulled those the whole house and kept going. So uh, we're proud of you and, and honored to be a part of your story. 
Well, Chris, it's, it's been an honor to be associated with you this year, you know, and not only do I call you my mentor, but you know, I'm, I'm blessed to call you a friend now. And uh, thanks for all you've done for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year to see where we go from here. Can't imagine what 2021 is going to be like. And, and also, it was 2020 that you did this with COVID, right? Like, right. that's pretty crazy yep. that you had a good year during COVID. So Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Heard it from James Mathis. All right, everybody, go out there and claim your life. My name is Chris Stanley, and we at IAPATH are dedicated to giving you actionable advice on how to have an amazing adjusting career that will help you break into the insurance industry so you can obtain freedom in your career and life. If you need help learning how to get work, head over to iPath.com and click the How to Find Work button. We'll send you a free video course that shares insider tips on how to get started. And until next week, keep walking your path and claiming your life.